My name is Rhapsody and welcome back to Monster Train, <clears throat> specifically the Hurzel's Workshop update. We've been continuing with our attempts at the challenges in Covenant 25 here. We have Overcharged. The challenge says the Pyre cannot take damage or you lose, but on the bright side, you have a extra Ember and Capacity. So I get two extra Ember and two extra Capacity. Honestly, pretty much anyone can utilize this well. The capacity is a little better utilized by some characters and classes, but pretty much anyone ought be able to do some work with this. Uh, it's also worth noting that the Pyre starts with Fragile as well as Damage Shield 2. That's a Volatile Gauge. It's a Volatile Gauge with two Crypt Builders in the base deck. All right. Hmm. Set up a Tethys Titan lane on floor two. Set some chumps up in front of it and then use its sweep to make sure that nothing gets to the top line and Crypt Builders to finish off targets. But I need some scaling plan for bosses as well. Okay, I'm taking the chill win then. Got a Stygian Banner next to a Merchant of Steel here. Probably going for the Hurzel Sword Remnant. Then Stygian Banner and Hellvent down there. So we've got our two Stygian possibilities. Let's look for uh, this to give us a unit draft. Money. Uh... I think I can take this actually. At most, we can leak one enemy to the top four. Anytime I have the ability, I really ought to just try and kill another unit on the mid floor. Definitely in order to get the collector as well. I hold one more card. And then one. Anything necessary just to get as many of those chumps down as possible. Start on these ones. Let's mold two characters out of the deck at this point as well. Although we've definitely got the kill. And have had for quite some time. Expensive cards like Crypt Builder just very easy to put in this deck. <laughs> Speaking of expensive cards like Crypt Builder, let's take another expensive card similar to Crypt Builder. Which of Seal shows us quick and incant plus two armor. There's the Guard of the Unnamed. We can put it in the front line with the plus two armor on it. That would pretty much, with the Tethys Titan Vein, already guarantee a lot of my wins for a while. I'll take it. Don't need to make any additions or subtractions there otherwise, so... Unit drafts, perfect. Hopefully this is a Stygian for us. Number of enemy units gain four additional damage. As long as we set up on the top floor and have any reasonable draws on our Crypt Builders, we should be fine here. Hmm. Okay, I'll pop two stewards out there as well. Third as well. I mean, especially if we've already got the kill and the collector on the top line. I mean, I can't cast two spells on this floor right now. Let's keep that enemy dazed for a little bit here. Keep it back. Perfect. And even... Yeah. Even bad luck on the top floor was still going to be fine for us here. 
We're about to get a lot less powerful as the bosses start scaling up. Too cheap. Definitely too cheap. Uh, not what I wanted. Maybe Wickless Tycoon just goes on that floor anyway. Or maybe Icy Silophite does. Set up some sweep. I think access to sweep does matter. Okay. It's also possible we end up with setting up on the mid floor with all of these. I'm definitely still cutting off to the left and looking for pyromains as well as the Hursles Horde here. I spell weakness two to enemy units when they enter the room below the pyro room. I'll happily take that actually. A lot of the time we're gonna be catching enemies there when, uh, or rather with our crypt builders. Awoken draft pick, the the cost reduction from Awoken Rail Spike would override. That said, you could also get One Horn's Tome from the Hellhorn draft pick. Umbra is probably the least likely for us to take here. Interesting. Wildwood Tome's not bad, the ability to apply quick on a sweeper. Also, Channel Song there, though there are so many units in the base deck that it's very unlikely I hit Channel Song on the right target. Okay, let's take a tome. And see what Talus has to say about it. Talus is going to be sapping all of our units, as well as attacking every turn to apply dates on strike. That's fine. Okay, I'll set up on floor two, I think, here. Yeah. Shame about that uh, Wildwood Tome here in the opening hand. Maybe I do need to set up on the top floor. Yeah, it significantly lowers the damage that we ultimately end up taking. I mean, that sap wears off now as well, so then you can actually get the kills on all of those chumps. Speaking of chumps, let's get a couple of these chumps out of the deck. Perfect. Happy to throw down the Cuddle Hex. Uh, I mean, look, it's just as many spells as I can cast again, right? Mortal Entrapment doesn't seem like a bad cast against the boss. In fact, I'm just going to cast that against the boss. Thank heck we held on to a Crypt Builder here. Whew. That could have been really bad. As in deadly. A bit more dazed on the back line. And then we should be easily set. Yeah, I want to double stack the Molten Encasement. That could be our win strap. Still going to the Stygian Banner this time, I think. Gives regard. Problem is that can consume my model entrapment as well as my crypt builders. I don't actually have that many spells in the deck. Poor frost effigy, transfer all frostbite on this floor, then double the amount of frostbite. I mean, look, that's not. It's not impossible to use that to actually just win a fight really super early. Sure, I'll take it as like side tech. The Titan Sentry on an individual floor by itself. Yep. Happily take extra energy this time. I'll be able to cast more of the spells that I draw. That's the final Stygian banner. If I turn that down, I never see another one. Come on. A 
Lodestone certainly helps. God, I wonder if I dupe Lodestone. Definitely cutting the two shinies. Well, it could have been two drags. Could have been two shinies. You would find another way, right? Um, we already have our sweep on that floor. Lotus Zone Totem and uh, Mortal Entrapment are the two good dupes here. But if I dupe Lodestone, I probably don't need to dupe it to, uh, the Mortal Entrapment. So the idea is uh, Tethys, two Lodestone Totems, and then start of each battle, enemy units appear on each floor. I would love to do that. Usually, that's free gold. Here, though, yeah, without a bunch of spells in the opening hand, it would have just straight up killed us. Thank you, Titan Sentry, for actually scoring that kill for us. Sweep set out here, too. I guess I just hard cast other cards. And I could also just crit builder here for a bunch of... Yeah, I'm going to crit builder for the damage. More than entrapment for the easy kill as well. Crit builder too. Hmm. Yeah, it's damage against individual targets on the top floor. We really, really, really like this totem fragment. Like, it's it's turning out to be much more important than I ever wanted it to be. Uh -oh. We're fine. But it's really making me nervous as to the future. To happily hold on to one of these cards. I mean, if nothing else, I just won't have to draw in the next cycle. That's a huge boon. <laughs> Those two self mutilations really wanted to try and kill me here. If I had taken any damage and could not block both of them. Would have been enough. It's another Horfrost effigy. It's irresponsible not to take it and try and do some killing of the boss. I think. Taking Dolphin Smoke as well. <laughs> Taking a hell of a lot of cards here. Okay. Very healthy pile. That we can't use. Okay, the plus 10 magic power, all of these. Very happy to go on the Crypt Builder. <laughs> so I'm going to be able to make... No, this wants to get double... Yeah, that wants to get double stacked. It's fine. Would we'll decrease its cost. Double stop. Oh, double stack. Found it. Six tons of days. Then these whole Frost Effigies want to become a bit cheaper as well, so I can use them after I set them up. Removals. Could also pay for some removals right now. Probably don't want to. Got a Merchant of Trinkets in the next area. Almost enemies gaining six additional damage. That is completely fine. I do not die to the enemies hitting my minions. I die to them hitting my pyre. And I don't die for the damage they do to my pyre. I die if they hit my pyre at all. So it seems a very easy take for us right here. I hate seeing this Wildwood Tome in the opening hand. It's happening a lot right now. And it is extremely unhandy. Mm -hmm. 
When I said we don't die to damage, what I meant was, ouch. We're about to die to damage. That chump block isn't even going to save us. Okay. We're still alive. Just really going to need a good turn. Well, engulfed in smoke will work for that. Top floor, and then... Just cast as many spells as I can, I guess. I don't want to kill my own unit there. Uh, I was really hoping I was going to retain the right card. Alright. Um, still haven't got the ability to access quicker. Lonesome Totem, which looks like it's about to die until I sap the hell out of these enemies. Okay. I'm going to play the Titan Sentry on the bottom floor, mostly just to start... Four Frost Effigy having some effect here. Okay. Six turns of... <laughs> exactly. Six turns of don't attack me and then you are dead. Molten Casement really pulled us through there. No. Nah. Don't need those. Don't need those either. Happy to go for all of the money here so that I can peel off to the left and hit a purchase as well as a reroll and then another purchase if I desperately wanted to. That cuddle beard does not look bad. I'll take that reroll. Units enter with frostbite too. That's a lot of enemies just dying very, very quickly between the cuddle beard and that frostbite. Oh, wow. Uh, negative one capacity on every floor, but plus 15 to magic power. Plus 15 to magic power matters a lot because the crypt builders don't just get that. They get five times that. So they get 75 extra damage. And all it costs me is a lodestone totem on that floor. Yeah. Yeah. They're, they're so good now. I also don't typically end up getting to play both Lodestone Titans in the first cycle anyway. Yeah, th all those Sigurdans are just going to die before they ever do anything. Great setup right there. I can start Horfrosting the boss right now. Hell, I should start Horfrosting the boss right now. And just keep doing it every turn until we win. She's still trying to get some intent, uh, incants rather on the top floor. Uh -huh. All right, Hallfrost Effigies. Back in hand, there we go. Perfect. Go off in smoke and then build a couple crypts while I'm there. Hmm. Top floor was already only a single spell from dead. More dazed. Just gonna throw out the molded for a Titan Sentry altar on the bottom line. Which I believe does get 
Yeah. You are within one Hoarfrost of dead. GG. I mean, Ice and Pie is still really good, right? We set up on the top floor almost all of the time anyway. The capacity gives me back the jam. No. We got a lot of draw. I'm going to double up on the energy here. There's some hits in that Merchant of Steel I'd like to see. In fact, there's a fair few. There's a lot of relics I would love to see. Fair few cards I'd still like to upgrade as well. Fine. Much of magic chose this double stack. Apply endless to the first friendly unit summoned each turn. Nice. Should help offset some of the other harshnesses. And then cut two dregs. I mean, mm, damage spells cost negative one on this floor from the conduit does not look bad. Doesn't look half bad at all. I mean, the only spells I really get to play on that top floor are damage spells, so it just saves extra energy on those turns. I, you know what? No, I'm at a surplus of energy. I need the ability to make sure that giant enemies die quite quickly. As long as we set up on the top floor, we should still be fine here. Yep, because these shade wings go up one floor and then they die before they even get to the top. Makes life pretty comfy, that. I'm a frozen lance into a mortal entrapment here. Saving myself from a large theoretical damage output. Titan Sentry gets that kill on that floor as well. And is then ready to start being reformed. I don't think Icy Silify performs anything for me at all right now. So, for that reason, I will not allow them to perform anything for me right now. So, love the big old engulfer right there. Do some preemptive frontliner kills. So I don't suddenly realize in a couple uh, moments' time that, wait a second, I died a while ago. Huh. Fancy that. 300. Oh my god. That's quick on you. No reason not to put that there. The Titan Sentry, like, it has endless just by being played. We really, really want to just get some health. Maybe a large, just, just a large stone and a heart stone. Two large stones, even? I mean, look, I'd settle for two large stones. Great. Mortal Entrapment was the one held in hand. It's exactly the, uh, the one I wanted. And then... One more Hoarfrost. Ooh. Big ol' Ice and Pyre. Throw the Hoarfrost as well. And, yep. That'll do it. No damage from you. I mean, Titan's Tooth makes a lot of sense. So does Ice Storm. Uh, Ice Storm's inconsistent AoE. Titan's Tooth is consistent AoE. It's the big differentiating factor there. I don't think I want another Engulfed in Smoke. I'm using it for like single, maybe double turn relief of taking damage while I build up my frontline units. It's not necessary. There's a Merchant of Steel, but the other side has a Hellvent. And that Hellvent could easily just be 
six more days every cycle. Let's look at the trinkets first. Hard pass. Reroll. We don't summon that many units. Forgotten name is decent. Another double step. Maybe I'm duping a Horfrost. <laughs> Alright, make it one cost. By the way, every time I'm reducing the cost of one of these, <clears throat> Ember Stones and the, uh, the previous mention of the Awoken Rail Spike, their cost reduction applies after the randomized cost. Every single time I do this, I invariably get a couple comments like, Raps, why are you trying to decrease their costs? That doesn't work. It, it does, though. It didn't used to work. And then I pointed out that that's inconsistent with a couple other mechanics. And then it now works that way. Yay. Uh, I think I actually will go for the, the dupe of the Horfrost here. I mean, look, if we're not even putting Icy Silophite out, it should be cut so I don't get it as a priority draw. And another Hawfrost Sash with you. So, any non-champion card has its cost randomized between one and three, draw plus three each turn. So should I draw Hawfrost Effigy with two Ember Stones in it and it rolls the cost of three, it will instead be one. If it rolls two, it's zero. One, zero. Can't roll zero anymore, right? The... Volta Gage used to allow you to roll zero, but that was uh, quite powerful. It's still really powerful, despite the change, right? So, I think that's a fair point to be made, that it was mm, maybe a little, uh, a little too much. Ah, uh, yes. Let's... Go frost. Then... I guess just start casting them. No, we don't need to cast a bunch. We need to get rid of dregs so we don't draw them again. That's what we really need. Hey, we have two Horfrosts. I'm gonna Titan's Tooth, Horfrost, Horfrost, 288 now on Seraph the Chase. Now the enemy is going to be halving their own Frostbite stacks every single turn, but as long as I more than double it in response, uh, it's fine. Doesn't necessarily look like I'm going to be more than doubling it this time, though. If nothing else, it's doing a lot of damage. Molded back this Titan sh Sentry, pop that down. Hundred, two hundred. Okay, it's not going to be enough if I use it that way. Fine. Um, and the drag goes. Drag can chump block, I guess. Or to get sacked.
I think I'm still fine due to the damage shields. Yep. Unfortunately, I had to give up my entire other plan, though. But I'll happily give up that plan if it means that I get to continue live. Continue exist. Oh, that next floor is looking... Maybe not equally bad, but... Rough. It's two easy ones there. Then, I mean, am I mortal in trapping here? Might as well, right? Good old ice and pyre. Uh, frostbite on you. Uh, there we go. Skull some frostbite. Maybe we still get to use whole frost effigy to some impact here. Is this drag even gonna manage to die? Well, it, okay, yeah, it does die of its own burnout. But it does look like the Seraph never got a turn to attack there. All right, yeah, that'll do it. <laughs> oh, yeah, like, without, with the plus two draw and then, sorry, the, the plus two energy and the plus two uh, capacity, obviously the big thing that you're missing at this point is just draw so then my first relic saying draw three extra cards a turn pretty good pretty good we've been getting a lot of very very good relic starts for uh for a lot of these runs so far i'm going to generate the shareable challenge here as well as uh then afterwards go and look at the challenge we'll be doing in the next episode however uh i was I was having a conversation the other day, actually, with uh, with with one of the bosses from um, one of the bosses from uh, Crash Team Racing, actually, um, in in the, the like the second zone of Crash Team, maybe it's the third zone of Crash Team Racing. It's been a while since I played that game, um, but he was he featured a lot in the uh, the the first game. I just can't remember his uh, name at the moment for some reason. I'm sure it'll come to me. But um, we're having this conversation, right? And he said. Um, Hey, uh, Rhapsody, what's that cartoon with the, the, the little yellow boy with the spiky hair and the, and the, 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 the eat shorts, eat pant, panty stuff? I was like, Papua, that's Simpsons. The, uh, challenge code is Papua, that's Simpsons. Let's go back to the challenges here and see what we have as the next. It is going to be Evil Eyes. Your units, your units have Permadeath and Heartless. But on the bright side, everything has googly eyes. Uh, so Heartless means they cannot be healed. Permadeath means whenever they die, they are purged from the deck. And googly eyes, all units have googly eyes in battle. Ooh, that's going to be a... That's going to be an interesting and spicy one. That's going to be tomorrow's recording, though. For the moment, my name is Rhapsody. The name of the game has been Monster Train. Hopefully, you've been enjoying yourselves. There's a playlist in the description down below with all my contents of the game past, present, and future. If you do like the videos please consider clicking like. It does help me get my content out to new people and it takes uh, like, uh, like uh, two seconds, maybe a second and a half. So it's, it's, it's a quite, quite, quite quick task. Hopefully you've been enjoying yourselves and hopefully we'll see you next time.